and welcome to Monday Night Football, where Soccer Town USA comes to you. Did I do good? Yeah, good. Hey, look. Go. Wow. You got it. Oh, she's actually did good on air. You can't you know, get it's been do that like on eight air. weeks since she occupied the studio. Hey, but you know what? She. Uh, I'm, I'm just excited. You're here. I'm she's, not she's had more, I'm excited you're here. But she's had more appearance than uh, our former predecessor. She, she officially takes over uh, second place all time appearances over Manny Meza. And uh, only second to uh, Roy Alvaron. But Roy was on here for a whole season. Well, you know, it yeah, still counts. So. Uh, All right, so, Chi, I know you've been busy. You've been uh, coaching Dalton Middle School Soccer. So let's give you a little minute and a half. Give us a I'm quick recap uh, of your little um, uh, season Tell here. us about your season. Um, our season was, it was actually a really good season. Um, let's just say that it's Hammond Creek and the, junior, the Dalton Junior High um, that, was, that made up the varsity team. Um, but they went pretty far especially having sixth graders play against eighth graders. Um, so we did make it to the state final, to the region final. Um, we didn't get the win, but like I told them before, in the bracket, I think we were in fifth place um, out of seven teams probably. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anyone would have seen us make it in our first time in this tournament um, to play up in the final. So wow. I'm very proud of the girls. Well, congratulations to you and, and your girls. That's quite an accomplishment because, you know, it's like, we, it's like we were saying all year. It's not necessarily how you start the year. It's how you finish. And we saw yeah. uh, several things. We saw Christian Heritage. We saw Northwest both do the exact same things. So. And anything else you'd like to add? Any other Any late other? breaking news? Yeah. Um, well, um, I guess... That was a fun experience for me, but I think that's a chapter to close because I have a new chapter opening up. Um, I'll be coaching now, at, uh, hopefully. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll be coaching at uh, Point University. Awesome. Um, a whole different level. And I'm excited for that one. Of course, it's sad when you let go of the little ones, but I told them, when you get older, I mean, I'll be around. You can play for me again. So there you go. Some breaking news for you. Uh, Chio will be going down to Point University. She'll be uh, assistant to uh, Randy Douglas, which some of you may remember all the way back in the Mexican League here where, where I first met him. And, the Mexican and, League. I don't and also, what's that? The Hispanic League, Mexican League, yeah. yeah that, that's how it rolled back in it the was, days, It man. was, it was. It was. That's, Mexican that's League, how yeah. it was known. Yep, that's how it was known. So... Congratulations to you. Thanks for being on our show this year. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see if you can make it back for one more. Yeah. And so, but, you know, as uh, Chio started out this, she said, welcome to, uh, welcome on Night Football to Soccer Town USA, where Soccer Town USA comes to you. I don't know if we can call ourselves Soccer Town USA this year, so we will put that on the hiatus for 2024. Uh, but we had a great run. Uh, but every streak has to be broken. Look, we're about someone. to pull up a graphic that proves. Oh, that we, we're we adjusted. Town we USA. adjusted the graphic. So oh, let me see if you can. Uh, this is what happens when I'm not here to start pull showing. Pull up this time. graphic. No, but look, this. no, we you. Oh yeah, that looks great. So we added some things. So why did we classify ourselves Soccer Town USA? Todd, let us know why. So it all kicked off in 03. For those of you who remember, that was Dalton High versus uh, Heritage, not the Heritage in Ringgold. And then uh, in 04, they lost to Westminster uh, in a high, hotly contested uh, match. You can see 10 years later, though, 2013 starts kicking it up. 2013, 14, 15, Dalton High. 2017, Southeast. My alma mater coming in 2018. Tell me that, that my school, you tell me 15 years before that we were going to win a state. No way. 2019, Dalton. 2020, uh, that was COVID year. 21 was Dalton, Southeast, Cahalla Creek. 22, Southeast, Dalton Academy. 23, Dalton, Cahalla Creek, and Christian Heritage. So for the first time, those since 2016, mm -hmm. we will not have a state champion from the Dalton Woodfield County area. Wow. It's still Soccer Town USA to me. Yes. But with that, we're going to commercial break. We'll come back. We're going to talk about Northwest and LaGrange. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At ColdwellBanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At ColdwellBanker.com. Who's up for some football? That's not football, this is football. And Andy, there's one thing that we all can agree on. That's it, North Georgia is the home for new and pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget accessories, parts, service, and collision needs. Claro que si sí se puede. Come see us. Hey, that's our part.
Why should you choose OptiLink Internet? I chose OptiLink because of the great local service. We know computers and OptiLink knows Internet with high-speed symmetrical uploads and downloads. My customers depend on me for safety and security, and I need fast and dependable Internet. That's why I chose OptiLink. Some people say you can't have fast Internet. I say, oh, yes, you can with OptiLink. Experience the difference. Call today, 706-529-1313. I'm Waylon. I live in Dalton, and I'm the owner of Elite Lineman Training Institute. And I'm Mitch Sanford with Bentwell Bank. When I left Georgia Power to start my own business, I met with Mitch and told him what we were doing. I told Waylon, you're the kind of business we want to work with. We have a very high standard for how we work as a company and especially how we treat our clients. After a very candid conversation with Mitch, we knew we were on the same page. Today, we're working on several businesses, training and real estate. Because they do the heavy lifting, so I can focus on my business. My bank is built well. And welcome back to Monday Night Football. Uh, as we discussed, we're going to discuss uh, Todd's alma mater. But before that, I want to give a quick shout out or two. I want to give a quick shout out to my boy, Luis Favela. Thank you for serving me up at uh, Bojangles this past weekend. You always had a smile and it was nice to catch up in line. Uh, Todd, as we were leaving the Chris Heritage game, uh, we want to give a quick shout out to Jocelyn Torres. Uh, her brother plays yeah. for Christian Heritage and... Uh, even though they went out, she was like, hey, can you give me a shout-out? So we said, let's get There's you a shout-out. Shout out. So, <laughs> all right, Todd, let's go over here. Let's discuss a little bit of Northwest of Grange here. Yeah, so, man, that we'll start out with the quarterfinal early last week up at Northwest Whitfield. And uh, I, we got some highlights for that. We can roll right into that if you want to. All right, right off the throw-ins, what's two headers, Juan? Uh, two headers is a goal, my friend. Oh, okay. And that's Matt Molina <laughs> coming, coming in, uh, getting it started right there. And then this was uh, Northwest dominated most of the game, but mm, you know what? If you don't put your opponent away, you leave yourself open to that. And that was quite the cracker by LaGrange to tie it up with less than five minutes to go in the game. Uh, sent us into uh, overtime. And this right here was a big difference maker. This is, uh, actually, I'm trying to figure out what this is right Oh, here. it looks like a great save. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is a great save, isn't it? I didn't, even, I didn't even know I sent that in. Yeah, it looks like uh, Neri Martinez. Uh, not the Neri, your friend Neri Martinez. Yeah, different, but, uh, different one. Different Neri Martinez. What's she doing there? Nice. All right, now watch this run here. Watch this run right up the side there. So coming up through there is Jude Knowles. This kid came in, brought the energy, does his best 4-4-40 up the sideline, smokes the defender. When he came in, man, I'm telling you, it changed the game. He had been on the bench the whole game, comes in, and that right there is going to be a corner kick by Chris Tapia. And then finishing it off is Fred Bear himself, Freddie Lara, with the game winner. And uh, so, yeah, that was, a, that was a big night for Northwest. They come in. Uh, they move on to the uh, semifinal where they had to travel over to Johnson, which we do not have highlights from that. But I caught up with uh, Freddie and, with Neri, Freddie and like. Neri after the game. Uh, they are uh, near, uh, I should say, Freddie was talkative, uh, and uh, Neri not so much, but we can roll that interview. Hey, this is Todd Money Not Football. I'm joined by uh, Freddie Lara and Neri Martinez after their 2 1 win in the semifinal over LaGrange. Guys, big win tonight. Uh, Neri, let's start out with you. You're on the back line tonight. I know you took some tough shots, but you got a big line in front of you there. Your defense stood up. Just talk about your, the guys in front of you, uh, what they did for you tonight. Yeah, they did. They did. They did their job. They did their job. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, hey, and Freddie, let's talk about you. Last season, man, you went down with an ankle injury midway through, missed out. Now you're coming back this year, man, and you have the winning goal in uh, the semifinal. Man, just talk about going from one extreme to the other. Um, I got my injury for uh, my stop. Yeah, no, no, I got fractured last year, and I just worked, worked through the summer, hard work, and I worked all the way through here. And I didn't start off, I didn't start off playing in the uh, first 11. So I was I was just um, watching the game at, in the bench, and I was just analyzing the game. Yep. And then I came in, and then I told Jude, we, we have to go in with everything. We got to give it 100%. Everything, we got to go all in. This is our last home game. We got to go. And then we came in with energy, me and Jude. Um, I want to give Jude like... Um, yeah, he did. I, I hate to use one of y'all's words, right? Yeah. But you came in 
Kids got the riz, right? Because the energy level, dude, it was wild. The energy level just went up across the whole team, the entire stadium. And, it, and he gets the corner kick that ends up leading to, to your goal, right? Yeah. And then I scored the goal, and we got hyped. Now we're going to the final four. Nary, dude, you're going to the final four. You're going to face the big guns in Gainesville, man. Uh, you got to be the wall of Whitfield County over there. So we're going to wish you guys the best of luck moving on, all right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so I don't know what they were laughing at, Todd, but I think there's some shenanigans going behind the camera. There must have been, but hey, if there were shenanigans going on, like, kudos to Freddie, like, he kept it together. Professionalism, <laughs> he kept it, he's like, I have to pull through. But uh, really quick, before we talk about a little bit of the Northwest Johnson game, I think uh, you said the word riz, meaning charismatic, is that correct? Yeah, but that ain't how the kids use the word all right, charismatic, so, uh, so that made me, like, swear an oath. I will leave kid words to kids, all so right? What is, so is this, this the Todd's oath? That's the oath. I will no longer use any words not belonging to my generation. I will not try. <laughs> and that was at the request of Freddie Lara himself. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got a couple of minutes left in the segment. So as we all know, uh, after that win, Todd, they went on to go on the road to play a Johnson team, that uh, defending state champion uh, from last year. Uh, and lo and behold, your Bruins, like, pretty much kept them in check the whole game, except for two minutes and 23 seconds left. Johnson comes back and scores, and they go on to win 1-0. Yeah, I mean, but I, I think – they knew it was going to be, number one, like if everything was perfect, it was going to be a tough match, right, going over to Johnson. I mean, you're talking about a two-time defending state champion, right, one loss this year, but now you're going to have to go do it without one of your star players, Matt Molina, uh, didn't, uh, wasn't able to play because of uh, accumulated cards from the previous game. So they knew it was going to be a tall order. But, you know, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them for, you know, the entire game and going out the way they did, Man, it's great. Like, honestly, I don't think they have anything to be ashamed of. I know they're probably down about it. But at the same time, like, you know, a lot of respect for what they did this year. But, I mean, let's just say that's to be expected of this, North, uh, expected of this Northwest team. They came out. They tied a Dalton team that beat Johnson, which I think, honestly, Northwest had a better run and play in that game. They could have won that game. Their record was overall was up and down. They went in with a losing record, but they came out with a winner. But they, they played a very tough out of region schedule. Um, so I think this was well, a great outcome for him. Sure, let me ask you this. Like you kind of went in the same thing with your girls, right? Not the best regular season record, but <laughs> you went you were going into the playoffs. It kind of like Northwest. They had a losing record going into the playoffs. What I mean, how do you, in your opinion, how do you motivate your team that may have not had the best regular season, but now you're going to the playoffs where you can make it happen? Um, so a lot of it, what I realized that uh, I can have prob really good quality players. Um, I did try my best to just build a good chemistry and anything that happened, a negative outcome, let's say we lost a game, I would tell them, I would tell them and convert that, it's kind of like an alchemist. Like you convert that energy into something positive. I'm like, this is simply just something for us to learn of. I'm like, we know where our weakness is, that's what mm -hmm. we're gonna build off of. Um, but when it was time to go into those semifinals, they were gonna face a really hard team that we lost up against. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I'm like, I am not on the field. I have no voice on the field. I have it on the sideline, but it's someone needs to, someone in this field needs to take leadership. I'm like, if you really, really want this, you guys can push together through it. And that's what happened. We beat a team that eventually beat us in the regular season and they were out and then we made it in there. And that's why we have the coach here. All right, stick around. Uh, we'll be back for more Monday Night Football. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are gonna last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. Has a recent storm damaged the roof of your home? Altman Roofing has been restoring homes since 1984. In Dalton alone, over 2,000 roofs have been replaced by Altman. Altman Roofing will also work with your insurance claim. 
For a free 15-minute estimate for roofing, siding, or gutters, call 706-529-8136 or visit altmanroofing.com. You can also see their professional work on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, North Georgia. Gracias, North Georgia. We appreciate you, North Georgia. I'm C. Mark. I'm John Moore. Like the Georgia Bulldogs, we're number one. Thank you, North Georgia, for voting us number one six years in a row. If you're hurt and want the best, give us a call. We'll do the rest. Hey, welcome back to Monday Night Football. And take two. Take two. You don't know that, but we do. All right, so we're talking about some uh, single A action with Christian Heritage in town. Uh, you know, and that's another one of those teams that at the beginning of the season, like we really didn't know what to expect. We knew they lost a lot of talent last year, but, you know, we thought, okay, they'll rebound back. And they had that game early in the season against TDA where they get wiped out 9 nothing. We're like, oh, this, this is going to be catastrophic. And then slowly they got players, started to build up. It's just not the same team. Yeah, and it wasn't the same team. Like I said, they came in uh, playoffs riding a, I mean, a pretty good, decent win streak. They had, they ended up winning region again after the way the season started. Uh, they had a bye, uh, then they came off an easy win versus uh, uh, in the second round. And then they came off another win versus, in the, versus Eccles. Went on in the semifinals. So they came off five one win on Eccles. Then obviously they went into a, a rematch of the state playoff, state championship last year versus George Military College. So this team was a totally different team uh, from last year's team. Uh, like I said, last year's team, technical ability was probably way uh, on a different level with the technical yeah. ability. Obviously, they put a couple of kids in college. This team, what they did, what they lacked in technical ability, they made up in grit and grind. I mean, this team was never out of it. Uh, they gave it their all. They were, they were fighting for every loose ball. Um, you know, they still had some, some players with technical ability, but, you know, where last year you could you could point out on forward, midfield, or defense, you could spot it out. But like I said, they had a great run. They ran into a tough Georgia Military College team that is going for their third state title in the last since 2019. Mm -hmm. So, and we found out there's some they're fans of Monday Night Football. Down yeah, there. yeah. So a big shout out to those who drove over from Georgia Military College to watch the game. Uh, they they stood right. Some of their fans, well, kids really that made yeah. the ride over, stood right beside us the whole game and supported them. So. Uh, you guys keep supporting your team over there. We uh, we respect what you're doing. So. And a shout out to the head coach uh, for uh, chatting us up. He's uh, he's he lo he watches our show. He wishes they had something down there like this. Uh, All I said is he just needs uh, a no, couple wait, of wait. Yahoo's willing to do it. So yeah, or you know, if you, wanna, if you really want to be a part of the show, I mean, we got a couple openings up here. If you want to just move north a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, there's some coaching hey, positions. There's some coaching positions down at Dalton Academy. You know, uh, down at uh, North Murray. I mean, come on, then we can have you on here every week, coach. So you Juan, know what I'm talking about. So, Juan, do you want to go to the highlights? Let's go to some highlights. We got highlights from the Eccles game. This was a 1-1 game that went to penalty kicks uh, where uh, uh, Christian Heritage ended up getting the better of, of Eccles. So. Yeah, this is uh, Carson Russell starting it out. Hey. These are, these are, we got the extended highlights. So this was – What a celebration. You know, let me ask you guys: Do y'all have a spot you pick when you go to when you do PKs? Like, do you have a spot you go to every? I'm a time? defender, bro. I don't have a spot. I don't take <laughs> I PKs. I used to. You just do a hit and hope. Yeah. Yeah. You just bust it as hard as you can and call yeah. it a day. <laughs> Jill, no. You don't I have did. A spot? Oh, you, you I did. I did. Well, what What was it? You don't want to reveal. It's In case somebody's watching the show that'll face you later. If you played at Dalton State with me and you were at the Bruton Parker game. It's a traumatizing event. After that, I said no more. And it was a game to go into the okay. quarterfinals. <laughs> oh, a little bulger there. Yeah, these are some nice finishes here. Those are good. I did have a spot that I, I went to every single time. It didn't matter if it got saved. I was going back there the next time, too. Because it It's not like back in the day anybody had scouting on me or something. So this gentleman right here, uh, I'm losing his name, but, man, he played his heart out in both games. Uh, yeah. Actually, he scored the the – the amazing uh, goal to tie up the, yes, the game against George's uh, military he college. He like a Cristiano Ronaldo setup. Yeah, he does. I think I think he really looks at Is he, is he a striker? Him. He's a midfielder striker. Where's number 14? So I guess if you that do was... 7 into 14, you know, it fits in there. Now, Todd, you love this guy right here. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was all night left footer, <laughs> field goal kicker. Oh, my and movie. the thing is, so here's when uh, Georgia Military College, what? they. Oh, what a Sally. Oh, his Sally was good. Uh, but I know in the final, in the semifinal, you even heard the coach say. Oh, there it is, a save right there. Watch out for that left foot. And that was a save. That was one of the big saves right there for Cash Hare. Um, and so he's a first-year goalie. He's, he has not played at all. I'm uh, telling you, I'm telling you, he's a kid that somebody could. Look at him just touching the, like, like let's go. Yeah. Then, if, if, a, if a college coach wanted, wanted like, somebody with just raw talent to work and could work with him a couple of years, man, he's, he's the kind of kid he could. He could See, do, I mean, right there, he just needs work. I yep. mean, let's just say. Polishing. So, like, he's there. Like, he, he sort of skipped there yep. instead of pushing off. Yeah. Thinking with I'm telling you all the, I mean, but you know what? The thing is, the other night he made some saves that I that I've seen experienced keepers not be able to make because of his sheer athleticism and talent. So uh, great win, and that uh, pushed him on to the semifinal against Georgia Military. And I don't know if we're gonna go right into that. Yep, this is it right here. I was walking into the stadium when this happened, uh, and here. Oh, oh no, oh. that was the. Uh, you know, and Juan, you've talked about it all postseason. Keeper play, keeper play. That I mean, you've harped on it, but but it, it's a it's a truism, right? It's like you're gonna ride your your hot goal score, and you're gonna absolutely depend on solid keeper play. Yeah. And uh, he, you know, he got a hand on it, and you would hope he would push. Well, it this right here was situation. actually down to think about it. This was the goal that put uh, Christian Heritage up, oh, there goes and, Kelly. and then Eccles came in and tied it. Oh, so here's the first goal for. Uh, this was a good finish. Boom. Mm -hmm. yep, that was solid. Now, this is oh, against, so that was from the last game. Yeah, this is against Georgia Military College. This is when I was walking in. This put them up one now, nil. Is that Lerma? Uh, no, it's uh, Ojeda. And then okay. this is, uh, look at this goal right here, Chio. Oh, you're going right, to like this one. Boom. Oh, wow. Whoa. That's placement right there. That tied up the game 2-2. Two to two, And then within a minute later, who was yep. who who was that that shot it? Jose Ojeda, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, the other guy is number 14. I can't think of his name. Uh, but that goal right there tied up to two, and then George Military came back with a minute later, scored another goal, and then they scored another goal after that. Yep. Pretty they much really, it was they a really wrap. put it away in the second half, and, and you know, uh, Christian Heritage really tried to push it and make the comeback. But, you know, they fought hard, but they just come up a little bit short. Uh, just to, You know, they weren't that far away, I never yep. thought, so – and congrats to Georgia Military College. They go on to the final. They will play Atkins County, who beat that Atlanta Classical School. Yes, so good yes. luck to Georgia Military College. Hopefully you guys can get your third title in the last five years. With that, we're going to a commercial break. My car looks totally ruined. I don't even know what to do. Locally owned Dalton Collision Center is the only choice when it comes to all of your auto body and refinish needs. Our experienced staff provides quality work from start to finish, will help with your claim, and even assist with getting your rental car. Everything from A to Z. So you can focus on life, we can focus on getting you there. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are gonna last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. This year, Coal Banker Kennard Realty is proudly commemorating our 50th anniversary and what a journey it has been. For five decades, Coal Banker Kennard Realty has been the heartbeat of real estate in Northwest Georgia. We've had the privilege of helping thousands of homeowners with their real estate transactions. Thank you, Dalton and Northwest Georgia. Whether you're buying, selling, or expanding your business, trust the experience that comes with 50 years of excellence. Coal Banker Kennard Realty with offices in Dalton, Calhoun, Cartersville, Ringgold, and Cleveland, Tennessee. 
Well, welcome back to Monday Night Football. As uh, we mentioned, we had just discussed the uh, Christian Heritage versus Georgia Military game where they went down 4-2. to two. Uh, But we did have interviews that we caught earlier in the week that I was able to get uh, after the Eccles game. Uh, we were able to, I was able to get interviews with uh, Coach, uh, uh, Coach Boyd, who in the interview did state uh, that, that would, this would be her final season. She would not be coaching anymore. Uh, that was breaking news. She brought it on there. We had already mentioned it, but she officially had confirmed it on there. We also had uh, interviews with uh, Carson Russell, a uh, captain that's going off to play college ball next year. He uh, uh, was one, scored the first PK. And then we had uh, the basketball player turn goalie, yeah. emergency goalie this year. Takes uh, guts to get in there. Uh, first year under uh, between the pipes, and we got an interview with him. Uh, so it was all three great interviews. So we're going to roll into that, and then after that we'll come back uh, and we will uh, discuss a little bit of Dalton McIntosh. All right, you're Coach Boyd, uh, the winning coach for uh, Christian Heritage uh, High School. So, uh, Coach, let's first start out. Well, one more game. Yeah, going to PKs. It's a game that, from that, from my point of view, looks like y'all dominated possession, y'all dominated play. Just the chances didn't come. How did you feel on the sideline during the game, and then going into the uh, extra time? Yeah, it was rough because we had so many shots on goal and just weren't able to capitalize on them. Um, but what I love about this team is that they have such good energy and they play as one unit. So if you were here tonight, you would have heard them conversing with each other on the field with that mentality that we're doing this together. So the energy was really good and they stayed consistent in that through the end. So, um, again, this is, I wouldn't want to teach, I wouldn't want to coach any other team. These are the guys I wouldn't want anyone else. You know, if it was supposed to be somebody else, it would be somebody else, but it's, it's this group and it's really special, especially to be able to go out my last year with this with this group right exactly. Now. So yeah, yeah, advanced to the semifinals. You were state finals and state champions last year. How does that feel to know that the the, the dream is still alive potentially yeah. for a back to back? I mean, we don't want it, but the dream is still there. How does that yeah, feel? I know in the beginning of the season, after we lost all the guys we lost last year, a lot of people, maybe even some of us, were just not sure what it would look like this season. Um, and then we played some really hard competition with Dalton Academy Heritage in the beginning um, and having some tough, tough scores after those matches. But they they grind. They they will match competition. They'll do whatever it takes to, to be successful. And so um, I'm just excited to see what Friday looks like. Um, we're very capable. We have what it takes. And so I'm, I'm pulling for them. Um, I believe I'm in them 100 percent to be able to go all the way. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. And good luck on Friday night. All right, this is Juan with Monday Night Football. Here we are with Cash Hare, the starting goalkeeper and the winning goalkeeper for a Christian Heritage. Uh, Cash, so y'all are up 1-0. They come back to tie at 1-1 with like less than two minutes left of the game. Y'all go into overtime, still tied 1-1. And then y'all go into PKs. What was your mentality going into those PKs? Well, for our practices, we've always implemented PKs a lot. And I've always trusted my coaches. And Coach Malone always told me, he always watched film. So he knew what every one of their players were going to hit it. And he told me top left, first one. And sure enough, I blocked it top left, first one. And then the last one, he he hit the pit uh, to go the box. And we got the win, so I'm very excited for going all for it. All right. And I, and I see you wearing a familiar number 99. I think that's uh, your uh, man that can't, ain't playing this year. Yes, what does it feel to represent that number, knowing and everything that he's brought to the team? He was a phenomenal goalkeeper whenever he was here at CHS. I remember... It's my first year playing, and last year, whenever I was watching him go on their state championship run, he's just a tremendous player. He's an acrobat, and he's really someone I look up to in the goalie position. All right, and obviously, uh, you guys are going on to the semifinals. What do you? What's the message to, uh, to get out of the semifinals to try to make it to another final? I think we just we play together, we play as a team, and we play the right way. And then our chances will come, and we just got to capitalize on it. All right, appreciate it. Thank you very much, Cash. Sir. Thank you. All right, this is Juan uh, with Monday Night Football again. Here we are with Carson Russell. Uh, actually scored during the game. Uh, so, Carson, you score with about 10 minutes left in the game to put the score up 1-0. Uh, and then, um, you know, you got all the momentum going, and then you have a little, there's like a little, I think, miscommunication out here. They get a free kick, and they tie the score at 1-1-1. I saw you after they score and run down against your team. What did you tell your team to keep uh, to stay motivated? I just told us that listen, like it's a mistake, mistakes happen. It's part of the game. We just have to regroup and kind of just go back because at the end of the day, 
Like no matter what the call is on the field or no matter what happens, we just have to regroup, go back and try to go at it again and try to win the game. That's all we were trying to do. What was y'all's mindset going into overtime, knowing that, you know, if we, uh, you know, this obviously there's a lot on the line. So what was the mindset going into that overtime? We really wanted to press them and just try to get the goal early and then not really lay off the gas, but kind of just be more like keep the ball minded. We did in the first couple of minutes, we did really well with pressing our winger, Louise, uh, Jose, uh, Joseph Bolger. We all did really well. And then it kind of slowed down, and that's when I think they got more confident and they started coming to us, and it was more even. All right, then you got going to Pete Case. Uh, what do you got to say about your keeper, Cass, who's, who's stepping in and have, filling in some big shoes there for Manny? Uh, but what do you got to say about Cass? He's a, he's a really hard worker. Um, you know, we joke around a lot of practice. We do Pete Case a lot, and I'm not going to lie, I've never seen him save one except for tonight. And it's really, it's kind of a testament to how hard he works and really how much work he's putting. Because he's, he's originally, he's a basketball player. Correct. Like he doesn't, doesn't do soccer at all. And so it was tough to get him to come out, but once he came out, he loved it, and that's just a testament to all the work he's done. All right, so yeah, we want to the semifinals. So what is the message out there? You got you and Northwest are the only teams left in the semifinals. Dawn got put out, Creek got put out. So what do you want to tell people to come out on Friday? Um, just you know, come out support. You no, know, we were here last year, and there was a good support. And I think that we have not the same team, but we have a different team, but the same dream. And so we could definitely go back and compete for another state championship. But I mean, it's going to be exciting. And, you know, our fans, got with our fans, they came out. We never, we, we went to PKs, they moved down with us, and it's just all love from them. So that's really what Texas, the people's, the community's love really gets us going. All right, well, thank you very much, Carson. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com. You can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. Who's up for some football? That's not football, this is football. At 80, there's one thing that we all can agree on. That's it. North Georgia is the home for new and pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget accessories, parts, service, and collision needs. Claro que si sí se puede. Come see us. Hey, that's our part. Why should you choose OptiLink Internet? I chose OptiLink because of the great local service. We know computers and OptiLink knows internet with high speed symmetrical uploads and downloads. My customers depend on me for safety and security and I need fast and dependable internet. That's why I chose OptiLink. Some people say you can't have fast internet. I say, oh yes you can with OptiLink. Experience the difference. Call today, 706-529-1313. I'm Whitland. I live in Dalton and I'm the owner of Elite Lineman Training Institute. And I'm Mitch Sanford with Bitwell Bank. When I left Georgia Power to start my own business, I met with Mitch and told him what we were doing. I told Waylon, you're the kind of business we want to work with. We have a very high standard for how we work as a company and especially how we treat our clients. After a very candid conversation with Mitch, we knew we were on the same page. Today, we're working on several businesses, training and real estate. Because they do the heavy lifting, so I can focus on my business. My bank is Bitwell. And welcome back to Monday Night Football uh, in uh, honor of our late, well, not late because he's still alive, but our previous <laughs> co-host. Uh, Who Roy, are you trying to kill off? I mean, I guess Roy Alvaron, I mean, and he did, he did Roy, have some enemies. Roy, Texas, if you're still alive, we need to check on, hey, check on your people, okay? This is a PSA. Check on your people. So, Roy, yeah, definitely check on Roy. I mean, let's just go. This is a Roy Power Hour. We're going to be discussing a little bit of Dalton here. Uh, they went in and played a rematch. They played a Macintosh team that they had previously uh, played earlier in the season. They lost three to one, which that scoreline wasn't indicative of what it was. Macintosh got the better of them last year as well, but obviously we know that Dalton went on to win the state championship last year, where Macintosh got put out by Midtown. This year, you know, Macintosh did their work. Uh, they went out and they got a one-zero defeat. And they beat uh, Dalton. I mean, they in the quarterfinals. You know, and you you and I talked about. And, Jill, you can talk about this, too. When you're having to try to defeat a team for the third time, because McIntosh played them last year and, and beat Dalton, and then they played them twice this year 
And so this last uh, quarterfinal game was the third time they had played. I just, how hard is it to, to defeat a quality team like Dalton, right, if you're managing Josh, three different times? Um, you have to strategize your tactics very, very precisely at that point. Because you start off with the team first time, you get to, you know, un- you kind of start to, like, how do you say, pull apart the pieces and be like, who are the key players? Who do they depend on? Where is their strongest um, holding line? Is it in defense? Are they strong in the middle or up top? And then you just start picking up, you start picking at the pieces apart. But that's how I would analyze it. But, you know, and I thought it might be extra difficult for McIntosh, too, because, you know, I, I don't – they had won the first two games – kind of using the same formula, if I'm being honest. So now you're starting to think, okay, do I change things up or do I, you know, just kind of, just kind of like go with it. And, uh, but whatever it is, it worked. I mean, Dalton, you know, I was trying to listen to the Jason Longshore um, audio from that game while another game, which is quite difficult, but it sounded like Dalton had two real bursts of energy in the first and second half in like the first 10 to 15 minutes. And of course, in the last maybe 10 minutes of the game, but really couldn't ever get that final touch. There was always there a Macintosh defender to clean it up. So, so that, is that the Jake's and Longshore synopsis you were discussing? Well, so I actually, I will read what he sent me. Uh, he said, Macintosh were slot, and this is in, in his opinion, <laughs> Macintosh were slightly better, got their goal off a set piece. Dalton had chances, but had a couple sa- saved and hit the post once. They didn't quite have enough in the middle. Salasas and Paez got isolated at times and, and wasn't, and no one was able to connect with him. David Saldana started to make it happen in the second half, but just not quite enough. Uh, Herman Santana was outstanding in the back and kept them in it. So that's, you know, agree with him or doesn't agree with him. That's, you know, that's the synopsis and, and view of Jason Longshore, a guy that's watched quite a bit of soccer in his quite day. Quite a bit of soccer. So and I respect his opinion and, and, and what he says, but... And I think and I think he's probably right. Like, if you got to say Salizas and Paez, I think we know Dalton, depth-wise, this probably wasn't their deepest team that they've had in years. And uh, they, they were missing some key pieces that could have made a difference within that uh, midfield. Uh, but obviously, you know, this – and also we know this Dalton team wasn't the typical Dalton team. And let's just look at – I mean, look at, look at the record. They, were 15, they played uh, 21 games, they had 15 wins, five losses, and one tie. Okay, and, but let, let's break that down a little bit. Well, right? they lost so twice. Two, two of the defeats. To McIntosh. To McIntosh, who's probably going to win the championship if, you know, if it plays out the way we think it is. One loss to Pace. Pace, right, and that was early in the season. Yeah. Uh, they lost to Cass. An unexpected loss to Cass. Yes, which, but. But Cass made a Final Four run. Yes, they did. They so. got knocked out in the semifinal against Decatur, who's going to play McIntosh in the final. And they, they lost to Baylor, which they had that game in hand, and Baylor's probably going to be in the Tennessee Private School State Championship. So, yeah, I'm not, so, but I'm just saying, like, but typically those games, like, Dalton would not have lost to Cass in the previous year. They would have beat Baylor. Uh, you know, you know, pace, I think it was. Just, I think that this year's team was just comes down to depth. Well, in mm-hmm. that pace game, I look at the pace and the cast game. If I'm being honest with you, I looked at the time they were played. There was some turmoil, you know, kind of going on, uh, some off the field stuff, and all that plays a part. You get the guys back on the field, and you're trying to like get, develop chemistry early in the season, and you face a team like Cass, which, for lack of a better way, but my understanding is there were kids that left other schools, and they kind of like landed at Cass, right? This is a strong, strong oh. squad, okay? And so, so you're saying this is a one-off Cass team? I'm not saying it's a one-off, but I, I am saying that, you know, maybe you didn't express that, you know, expect that level of competition in previous years, and you know what? It jumped up and got you this year. Well, it I mean, happens. but the good thing about, the, the, uh, like I said, they lost to Cass. That put them in a, a two-seed, uh, made them go on the road pretty much after the first yeah. round. Um, but the two losses of uh, Mag- uh, McIntosh, but like you know, overall they still won double digits. They they were in another state playoff run. They made it to the quarterfinals. Uh, I think you will be seeing more of this team coming up. I think I already spoke. Uh, oh, I'm. I'm so coach already seeing. told me that, that they're the freshmen that are coming up next year are solid. But so, but here's my only concern, and I want to put it out here for. <laughs> All of Dalton Public Schools. <laughs> With this whole soft zoning, it's going to be interesting to see where these kids actually end up going because, you know, the, now you got TDA. Technically, you got schools that are aligned to TDA. You got schools that are aligned to Dalton High. 
But you do have the option, but it's a soft zone, so you can't go to the other school as long as you provide yourself transportation or whatnot and meet the criteria to get in that school. So, Look, I'm a firm believer that, it, you know, based on my, my experience with Zeke Nava, uh, you can have a kid go anywhere in the Dalton Whitfield area that you want to. Well, I mean, if you got Zeke, I mean, he's got four kids and they all... They They're all in different, all school, different systems. school systems. You know what? He just likes to feel... But he likes to spread the wealth, as he, he said. We spread the wealth on Saturday. By the way, his daughter has a final tomorrow. I'll go watch it. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's why we were talking about. But like I said, Dalton had a great run. Sorry to go off a little tangent. They will be back. Um, I feel they. I'm will not be, worried about it. They'll be back. I, and from my understanding, Coach Cheese will be back as well. He's uh, the, he, this was his 30th year te uh, teaching and coaching, right. so he will be back. Uh, so we'll have to see what they got next year. But with that, we're going to go to commercial break. When we come back, we'll have uh, a little bit of a Cahulla Creek Columbus. provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are going to last them unfortunately for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. Has a recent storm damaged the roof of your home? Altman Roofing has been restoring homes since 1984. In Dalton alone, over 2,000 roofs have been replaced by Altman. Altman Roofing will also work with your insurance claim. For a free 15-minute estimate for roofing, siding, or gutters, call 706-529-8136 or visit altmanroofing.com. You can also see their professional work on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, North Georgia. Gracias, North Georgia. We appreciate you, North Georgia. I'm Seymour. I'm John Moore. Like the Georgia Bulldogs, we're number one. Thank you, North Georgia, for voting us number one six years in a row. If you're hurt and want the best, give us a call. We'll do the rest. Hey, welcome back to Monday Night Football. If you thought that we were going to skip Cahulla Creek, you were wrong. So uh, Cahulla Creek in 3A action uh, ended up the year at 13-5-1. Uh, they bowed out on a long road trip uh, down to Columbus. They lose out 2-0. That game was not on NFHS. Thank you. Mama Vasquez. For, thank you for nothing, NFHS. Thank you for my $15 going down the tubes on that one. Ugh. But we anyway. got Vanessa Vasquez. Thank you to her. We did. Yeah, thank you to her. And and I misread her text wrong. I thought the boys had went up 1-0. No. And that's, I was extremely disheartened to find out that was not the case. So uh, great season for Cahulla Creek. Uh, end up region champion. Uh, make it to the... Uh, Make it to the semis, and then uh, the long bus ride back home. I know they're going to be back next year. I mean, uh, they're definitely going to be back. They're going yeah, down to two A. Going next down year. to two A. Uh, they're losing some talent, but I think but they're going to be in two A. I think they will be just fine. I, you know what? There's other teams in three A that's going to be dropping to two A. I, think so it, I don't think it's going to be. I like, think it's going to be Creeks uh, uh, classification to win next year. I'm calling it right now. I Put mean, it out there. I say wait and see who else I drops I put it down. out there right now. I think on its own merit, I think Ella Creek will be back next year, even if they stayed in 3A. I'm not worried about my boys up there. Uh, but with that, obviously, they lost to Columbus. Columbus will be playing in the final versus Hebron Christian uh, on this week, so we're looking forward to that. But uh, let's just switch gears here a little bit, Todd. We were able to catch a little bit of middle school soccer this middle week as well. Yep. Uh, you know, action. the future of our, 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 our programs here, so we had to go give them some love. We went down to Eastbrook on uh, Thursday and because they were playing actually two finals, Eastbrook boys and girls both were both playing in the finals. Against North Whitfield boys and girls. Yeah. So, so uh, a future Southeast Cahulla Creek matchup. 
And it didn't go well for the Cahulla Creek side of it, did it? Well, I mean, the girls' game went into overtime, and I'll, I'll just put it out there. I thought the North Whitfield girls had the better run of play. I was there watching the game the second half, and the uh, Eastbrook girls, they scored on a breakaway, and it was against the run of play. It, so hats off, to, hats off to all the teams that made it to the final. Great run, great final on the girls' side. The boys' side, a little more lopsided. Uh, that yeah. game earlier in the season, I think, was a 6-0 Eastbrook, and then they run out 4-0 winners in the final. Uh, I w- you know what? I want some of the boys from Eastbrook, like, I want them age-tested or whatever you do. Like, they they're, had, they're they're had, they had thicker beards than mine. <laughs> they're, right? Hey, they're all boys. They're in eighth grade or below. Whatever, uh, My man. sister goes, uh, my little nephew goes There's there. There's some straight so. ballers there. That's yeah. for sure. I was impressed. But before the people from Dalton started saying, what about... Dalton does not play in this middle school league, so that is why they were not representative of being in this league. So, yeah, and that was the one night that we didn't have any other soccer to go yes. cover, so we so, went and covered this. But with that, we do have the Eastwood girls did come out winning. They won a PKs. Uh, if we can pull up, there's the team photo. Hey, right there. ten years in a row. They ten ought to be years up, in a row. They ought to be holding up ten instead of one. And we were able to get an interview with the two goal scorers of the game, uh, Sarai Torres and Eileen Vera. If we can roll that footage real quick. Hey, this is Todd with Monday Night Football. I'm here with Sari and Eileen from uh, Eastbrook. Uh, just, you guys are just crowned champions for the 10th year in a row. So, Sari, we'll start with you. What does that mean to you to carry on that legacy and be a champion again? It felt everything. Like, I know it's y'all, but... <laughs> All right, Eileen, let's, let's talk to you. Like, were you nervous going into extra time? It, it, it was tied up. You guys were so close the whole game. Uh, so, were you nervous going into extra time, or did you know you guys had it? I was nervous, but at the same time, I felt we got it because, I mean, um, like, we did good, but um, at the same time, it was really, like, rough going through extra time, but we knew we had it. We knew we had it. Well, congratulations, and enjoy the uh, 10th championship in a row to Eastbrook Middle. Against them. They're so cute. Uh, once again, that was uh, Sarai Torres and Eileen Vera. They scored the both goals to give the Eastbrook girls their 10th championship. That's crazy. Row. And big shout out to, to uh, Coach Bagley there. for Yeah, because Coach Bagley coaches crazy. Both, uh, both uh, boys and girls. If we roll to the boys. Yeah, and I, I did have an interview with two, with some boys, and they the audio did not come out well, so we weren't able to use it. Uh, so yeah. one of the boys he said need to get ace tested. They all look a little, you know. Man, whatever. Look at 15 right there. So 15 is a dual threat. Remember, Todd, he was the guy that was playing goalie to begin with. Oh, yeah, that's right. He oh, but remember, he's school. also uh, related to people that, that go to Cahulla Creek. That's right. So, I, you but, know what? Well, i got to get him up north. So, I, can't, but, I can't be having him slip off to southeast there. But we did have an interview, Todd. You were able to procure an interview with uh, Laura Bagley, who coaches yeah. the both boys and girls programs there at Eastbrook Middle School. Todd, with Monday Night Football, I'm joined by Laura Bagley, uh, head coach of the Eastbrook uh, girls and boys teams. Uh, tonight you go home uh, with two championships. Uh, let's start out with the girls. Uh, just tell us about your girls team and what they meant to you this year and how this team uh, came about. Uh, that's a good question. My my girls team this year, we started out losing game 6-0, um, a really inexperienced team. And they came out, they asked to work uh, extra day. We usually don't practice on Fridays. They asked to work and they came out and proved a lot of people wrong this season and came along with a championship. Yeah, they really had a lot of grit tonight to go into overtime and, and win that game. And not, moving on to your boys' side, uh, you know, they had, they had beat this North Whitfield team in regular season. Uh, was that difficult to motivate them for the championship game, knowing that they were going against a team that they had already defeated? I think so. Um, I think a lot of them kind of came in a little overconfident. So maybe the effort in the beginning of the game wasn't where it could have been and the score maybe wasn't as much as maybe they could have scored because of that. Well, congratulations. You're taking home two trophies, making uh, the Eastbrook alum proud. Uh, congrats and enjoy. Thank you. Uh, that was uh, good to see you reminiscing about my old stomping grounds, Eastbrook, you know, half a mile from my house growing up. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, Coach Bagley, I hear there's some opening at the high school level. Uh, if you want to step up, you've proven yourself at the level you're at. Uh, boys championship, girls championship, 10 years in a row. Nothing left to prove there. Might just want to step it on up to the high hey, school Todd, level. You put pressure I'm just on. saying. No pressure. I'm just Just like I called out the, the Georgia military college coach. If he wants to come up and help out at Dalton Academy, go. Yeah, yeah. You should just do the recruitment. But, but look, hey, look, like I said, we want to give a shout out to those teams and all the teams in the area because those are the teams that supply the, the talent for all, all of our high schools around here. 
Uh, but with that, we're going to go to commercial break, and we're going to come back to our final segment of Monday Night Football. My car looks totally ruined. I don't even know what to do. Locally owned Dalton Collision Center is the only choice when it comes to all of your auto body and refinish needs. Our experienced staff provides quality work from start to finish, will help with your claim, and even assist with getting your rental car. Everything from A to Z. So you can focus on life, we can focus on getting you there. We provide an excellent service for individuals who've had catastrophic injury cases. People who've had injuries that are gonna last them, unfortunately, for the rest of their life. Being there for a person, being there to actually see them get better, that is what this field is all about. That's what we're really striving to do, and that's what we think we provide. You still have to have that empathy for the person so you can tell their story to the jury. At the end of the day, that's where your case is heard. This year, Coal Banker Kennard Realty is proudly commemorating our 50th anniversary and what a journey it has been. For five decades, Coal Banker Kennard Realty has been the heartbeat of real estate in Northwest Georgia. We've had the privilege of helping thousands of homeowners with their real estate transactions. Thank you, Dalton and Northwest Georgia. Whether you're buying, selling, or expanding your business, trust the experience that comes with 50 years of excellence. Coal Banker Kennard Realty with offices in Dalton, Calhoun, Cartersville, Ringgold, and Cleveland, Tennessee. Welcome back to Monday Night Football. We've got a few more minutes in this segment, but this it's isn't like our last show. I was like, <laughs> our last show will be next week. We're going to have some special guests. Todd's going to get those set up uh, for us after the show. Apparently, so, that's what I'm going to do. So after we'll the go show. there. But my closing thoughts on this season is uh, it's sad to see that we didn't make uh, another. We didn't have a team in the state final, but we did have two in the semifinals. So. I think things will be changing next year. There's a lot of young talent that got their feet wet this year, and I think that'll be making a change. Uh, uh, Chia, what about you? Any um, closing thoughts? Change? I mean, we've already saw you this year, but any closing <laughs> I'm thoughts? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But talking about change, um, looking back at Eastbrook, you know, winning their championship, and then boys and girls also on our side made it to the championships. I think what the schools will be receiving in the high school level is going to be something – very unexpected, but also to very, very talented um, athletes are coming in. So More on the female side or male side? I, the fact that Eastbrook and the boys and girls and then at Dalton, boys and girls, that's how you know that we are, the investment that parents are doing, that the coaches are bringing in, it's, it's showing something because they started off at that young age. They started off at that small age. And so the fact that we're seeing this um, at a middle school le level, you're, you're getting to see what's going to happen in the future, All right. hopefully. And Todd, what about yeah. you? You know what? I'll, I'll uh, take a cue from you on that. And I'll say at the game the other night, I was really impressed with the players. As a matter of fact, on the girls' side too, I, I text Coach uh, Shannon Coley up at North – at. Uh, uh, Color Creek, and I told him, I said, I think you've got a couple of freshman starters coming up. Mm -hmm. Like I could just see out there the, the level of talent. And I was like, you're going to have a couple of kids that are, that are on this middle school team that are going to start for you as freshmen. Like You could just see it. So I think that's, that's well. Now, going back to the not winning a championship, sometimes I think, I think it's okay. I think it's fine because I don't want this, I don't want this area, Dalton Whitfield, to think that that's an entitlement. This is not something that just happens because you play soccer here. No one's going to bow down to you when you get in a state semifinal or in the state playoffs because of where you play. All right, you got to go out and you got to earn it each and every year. You start over and you're playing for yourself, but you're playing for the, the heritage and the past that, that you stand on and, and you got to recognize it. But it's not going to be given to you. So it's okay that we didn't win it. We can step back, everybody can step back, analyze maybe where we can improve and then move forward. And sometimes you need to do that. It's been since 2016. It's okay. Well, 2012, you really want to go back to. 
the, the streak. Let's yeah, just, the streak's fine, but I'm just saying every yeah. year, 17, 18, 19. 20, 21, 22, exactly. 23. So but, it's okay. But with that, you know, we're going ahead and uh, get ready to close out this episode, but stay tuned. Like I said, we have one more episode, and that will probably be the best episode of the whole year. So when we get teenagers that are nervous and they just start laughing and fall out of screen. So and that... I and I won't be using the word Riz. <laughs> if you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. Who's up for some football? That's not football. This is football. At Andy, there's one thing that we all can agree on. That's it. North Georgia is the home for new and pre-owned vehicles. And don't forget accessories, parts, service, and collision needs. Claro que sí se puede. Come see us. Hey, that's our part. Why should you choose OptiLink Internet? I chose OptiLink because of the great local service. We know computers and OptiLink knows internet with high speed symmetrical uploads and downloads. My customers depend on me for safety and security and I need fast and dependable internet. That's why I chose OptiLink. Some people say you can't have fast internet. I say, oh, yes, you can with Optilink. Experience the difference. Call today, 706-529-1313. I'm Waylon. I live in Dalton, and I'm the owner of Elite Lineman Training Institute. And I'm Mitch Sanford with Bitwell Bank. When I left Georgia Power to start my own business, I met with Mitch and told him what we were doing. I told Waylon, you're the kind of business we want to work with. We have a very high standard for how we work as a company and especially how we treat our clients. After a very candid conversation with Mitch, we knew we were on the same page. Today, we're working on several businesses, training and real estate. Because they do the heavy lifting, so I can focus on my business. My bank is built well.